Hey guys, what is going on and welcome to the very first episode of my Football Manager 2021 series. Yes, the wait is finally over. FM returns on my channel today and I am so excited for our next project to begin. So yeah, we're going to be starting off with Fulham for this year's save and I'm very, very excited about it. Now, by the time this video goes up, Fulham might have already been relegated. They might mathematically still have a chance of staying up, but it's been a tough first season back in the Premier League for Scott Parker's Fulham. Obviously, last season, they won promotions to the Premier League after their playoff final victory over Brentford. And I chose Fulham because I thought they'd be a really interesting team to use in this year's FM for many, many different reasons. Now, obviously, as we know, Fulham, again, newly promoted side to the Premier League. I often pick sides that have just been promoted to the Premier League or they're a bottom half, possible relegation scrap uh, type of team. And Fulham definitely meet that criteria. You'll notice in the game their media prediction is 20th. So the media predict they'll be finishing rock bottom of the Premier League at the start of the FM save. And yeah, it's going to be a challenge, but it's also going to be a really fun project to develop as well. I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Now, as you start a save, as you can see here, uh, I do start off with no coaching badges whatsoever and uh, no previous playing experience, apart, apart from Sunday League footballer, I think it is, but I think everyone's got that experience don't know but uh, yeah starting off with no coaching badges uh, as the save goes on as the seasons go by and um, what I like to do is do the coaching courses as the years go by so I develop my stats as hopefully fingers crossed touch wood the team is getting better as well um, so that's why I always start off with no coaching badge whatsoever it does make the game a little bit more difficult but I like to do it that way. And uh, also as well, you can see our objectives uh, with Fulham, both for the long term and for the current season. And the minimum expectation is that the team fight bravely against relegation from the Premier League this season. So even the board know staying up with this Fulham team is going to be a real real challenge. Um, now again, the team, as I alluded to a moment ago there, is a very interesting one because it's like loan FC in many ways. I mean, there are so many players loaned in, there are so many players loaned out. It's just a very weird mix of lots of lots of decent talent, but much of which isn't actually Fulham players, but loaned into the club. And there's also quite a few players that are still pretty decent that are also loaned out as well. As the team of players that we've got to work with in the very first season, including the players that are loaned in, you saw two players there that are definitely worth keeping your eyes on. Ruben Loftus-Cheekin from Chelsea and Adam Ola Lookman, who's been loaned in as well. It isn't a terrible team, I'll be honest. Whilst the board do predict it will be very tough to stay up in the first season, and again, the expectation is just to fight bravely against relegation not avoid it but fight bravely against relegation and me do predict we will finish in 20th place it's not a terrible team and there are some decent players here Mitrovic the Serbian striker is the guy we'll put a trust into banging the goals this season Tom Kearney is a really really good player maker uh, I like Zambu and Guisa as well as a hard-working midfielder alongside Harrison Reed too and I also bought in Tosin I can never pronounce the surname here Adarabayo I think that's right uh, had a recent loan spell at Blackburn Rovers snapped up by Fulham uh, on a permanent deal for a very cheap transfer of just £2 million. That's definitely a player to watch out for for now and the future as we look to develop him as our star centre-back. So again, there are some decent players here. It's not a bad team whatsoever, but it is definitely worth pointing out. It will be it will be a challenge to keep Fulham in the Premier League in the very first season. Um, now, for my transfer policy with Fulham this season, if you're a new viewer to the channel, well, you'll find this out very quickly, I'm sure. Like a lot of football manager players, I do like to develop young players and look to build for the future. But I also do like the occasional veteran dressing room leader um, here and there as well. Um, I would like to try and develop a core with Fulham as well. Um, one thing I think is going to be really important with this Fulham team is, again, assembling a core and a squad of players who will stick with us through thick and thin because I think it is pretty likely that we might be playing championship football once again next season and what I don't want to do is have all of my star players leave, maybe a big money sign and come in and then leave after the first summer transfer window, possibly on a cut price deal. I don't want that headache, I don't want that hassle. What I want are players we can grow with as the years go by. Whether we get relegated or not, I want players that are here for the long term. So I will be prioritising younger players and giving chances to young players uh, in this Fulham team, no doubt about it. But but again, I will look for some older senior players as well. And one thing my, let's say, long-term followers would know about me is that if you're a new viewer to the channel, you're going to find out very quickly, I really like players with high mental attributes as well. My favourite three in the game, determination, teamwork, 
work rate. Get ready to see a lot of players coming into the club that have high attributes in those three stats. Um, so to start off with, as you could see, uh, we did sell uh, Tim Ream, the American. He was a dressing room leader here at Fulham, but I was fine letting him go to Seattle for, I think it was two or possibly three million pounds. We also loaned out Kevin McDonald as well. And what you'll be noticing is there are a few players here that have their deals that come the end of the year or at the end of next year. And they're senior players who don't really have a long-term future here. I am totally fine letting them go, whether on cut price deals or not. Fabricio was another player uh, that we also sold as well. Uh, we've got Marek Rodak as a backup goalkeeper. He's totally fine as a stand-in for Alphonse Areola on loan from PSG right now. And again, as for new signings with Fulham as well, again, I'm going to be looking primarily for players who possibly play championship football, you know, the league below us, or possibly play SPL football as well. Looking for a nice British and Irish core. I think that'll be really cool with Fulham to develop some really good homegrown talent uh, not too far away and obviously that can be really handy with the Brexit rules as well uh, so the first player I tried to sign it was this guy Connor Roberts uh, I'm sure many of you know who exa exactly who he is uh, Swansea fullback very very talented only 24 years old very good when going forward and as you'll see we negotiated a very cheap deal with Swansea only 5 million pounds but in the end I kind of bottled it because I gave him a 5 year 30 grand a week deal and then I found out that Southampton were interested and this is one of the greatest things about FM it's not like FIFA career mode. It's 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 a lot harder to negotiate when you're not a team with a massive reputation. Because if bigger clubs come in for a, poten a potential new signing, it, it can be hard to convince them to come to you, even if you're willing to pay them more money. Club reputation plays a massive part uh, in Football Manager, which is just fantastic for a realistic transfer market. In the end, as you can see, I did decide to give Conor Roberts extra grand a year, take out the uh, take out a year as well on his contract to a four-year deal, 31 grand a week, and I also included a minimum fee release clause to clubs in the Champions League of £20 million as well. So in the end, I might not have needed to do that, but I felt pressured with Southampton putting a bid. They're a bigger club. They're probably more likely to have a much higher chance staying in the, in the Premier League than we are. So in the end, I thought better to be safe rather than sorry. And Roberts was my first signing for, again, £5 million. Pounds. Pretty happy with that one there. He'll play backup or at least provide some uh, competition for Kenny Tate, the Dutch right back that was signed this season. And also signed this guy as well. Uh, you've probably heard of this guy, that's for sure. He's a really good RTG buy in FIFA career mode. How he gets on F NFM, I'm not entirely sure. But he was available on a really cheap deal. And it was Lewis Ferguson from Aberdeen. We negotiated a £2 million pound deal with Aberdeen for him and we negotiated a decent five-year contract as well. Um, I also decided to sell Dennis Adoy as well. Again, one of those experienced players here at Fulham that don't really have much of a long-term future. I accepted two bids, one from Norwich for £4 million pounds, and also one from RC Lons for £2.7 million as well. In the first season, whilst Fulham do start off with a very small transfer budget of just £2 million, pounds, which really is nothing nowadays, um, in the first season, you know, getting good value for money deals for players we're selling isn't quite as important as just getting their salaries off the books. One thing you'll notice if you're managing Fulham in this year's FM is that their wage structure is just... It's a bit absurd. They've got a lot of players on really high contracts, many of which, of course, loaned in. Um, but either way, definitely worth considering. So just getting players' salaries off the books is the most important thing. So you yeah, did sign Lewis Ferguson along with Conor Roberts as well. So a Welsh right back and a Scottish box to box midfielder for two million pounds. Pretty decent deal that for a player. It's a bit of a low risk signing, if you will, on just eleven grand a week for a five year contract. Look, he might not develop very well and just not be much other than a squad player for us in the five years or he's here. Or he could develop really well and become into a star as the years go by 15 determination 14 teamwork 15 work rate i love the 17 stammer and natural fitness and a good leadership stat as well on a 21 year old pretty happy with that and we also signed another scottish player as well uh, ryan porteous porteous that how you pronounce that porteous uh, from hibernian also for two million pounds uh, and again another low risk signing there very cheap transfer fee not a very expensive contract and again like the upside could potentially be really really high he could turn out to be a really really good player as the years go by or possibly a squad player that again on 10 grand a week we're not paying a massive fee for in his weekly wage again very decent defensive stats 18 tackling 20 aggression on a 21 year old already with 15 strength he's six foot two as well he looks pretty decent i must say for the three signs we bought in there not much money getting paid we sold some fringe players some experienced players with not much of a long-term future i gotta say i'm pretty happy for the first summer transfer window starting with a two million pound budget i think we've managed to finance this pretty well here with we made a profit and we bought in three decent youngsters as well but I'll do it for the post commentary part of today's episode, guys. Every episode from here on out will be live, including the live part of today's episode. Hope you enjoyed the post commentary start, and now we're going to play our first game of the season as we take on Newcastle United, possibly already in a relegation six pointer on match day one. No pressure.
Alright guys, so welcome to the live part of today's episode. It's the series opener, Premier League opening day away at St. James's Park. And I'm already feeling quite nervous, to be honest, because, again, depending on how the season goes, this might already be an early relegation six-pointer. And one thing I want to say as we do get ourselves into the game is, first and foremost, please do keep in mind, I'm not that great at a game, and it does take me a while to get used to it. Um, obviously, quite a lot of things have been changed this year as well, so there's new things for me to learn as well. Um, am I going to take this advice or just leave it? Do you know what? Opposition instructions, I always go with the assistant manager. Everything else, I'm sticking to my gut. So this is going to be the team. Now, I played a 4-2-3-1 with Fulham. 4-2-3-1 uh, is a controlled possession style of play. I do use the preset tactics and then occasionally modify them a little bit as well. Uh, we're going to have mentality is positive. Uh, I, just, I, I don't know why, but in FM, I've always found that this... Just does not work for me. It's better to be brave in FM, I've always found. Uh, when we're in possession, we're going to play a shorter passing game with a lower tempo as well, playing out of defence. We're going to keep the ball on the deck with working the ball into the box on as well. Uh, when we're in transition, uh, take short kicks with the goalkeeper, playing it to our centre backs and also full backs as well. Um, and also regroup when possession's been lost. I don't know why, but counter press has never worked for me on FM, regardless of how good my team has been. And when we're out of possession, we're going to play a higher defensive line, push up the pitch a little bit further with our back four, higher line of engagement, and also press more urgently as well. So our team's a 4-2-3-1. Uh, from pre-season as well, we've got three injuries. Joe Bryan's come back with a twisted ankle. Terence Congolo is out of a broken toe. And Adam O'Lookman, unfortunately, is out of a twisted ankle for five days and three weeks as well. Bit of a strange range, that, but okay. And this is our team, 4-2-3-1. Uh, we've got Alphonse Areola in gold, about four is Anthony Robinson, Anderson, Tossin and Kenny Tate. Uh, Lamina and Zambo are our midfield duo with Caballero and Josh Honor as inside fours. Tom Kearney is our playmaker and Mitrovic, who I've made vice captain for this year, by the way, after selling, uh, sorry, after loaning out Kevin McDonald. He is leading the line. There's a lot of pressure on Mitrovic this season to bang in the goals to keep them up. I don't know why, but I think we're going to struggle to score goals this season. On the bench, we on the bench, we've got Rodak, uh, Hector, Oleania, Connor Roberts, Harrison Reed, Lewis Ferguson, uh, Ruben Loftus Cheeks, Bobby Reed, and Josh Maja as well. So, first game, it's the Magpies in James's Park. Already feeling the pressure. Come on, Fulham. I'm not normally someone that's so apprehensive to change, but there are certain things that have been altered for this year's FM that I'm not a massive fan of, I will be honest. However, this is absolutely superb. Now again, if you're a new viewer to the channel, you will find out very quickly the mental side of team sport and individual sport is something I'm quite fascinated by in a very weird way. This is just so, so cool. So I'm gonna keep my hands on my hips with a nice feminine stance and say, I expect a win today. Come on Fulham. <laughs> So I do play on 2D, uh, as you will find out very quickly. I'm an old school FM player, 2D for me. Oh, oh yes, get in, what a start. Five minutes in, Anderson on his debut on loan has given us the lead. Caballero whips in a corner and how clean are those graphics by my standards? No lag. Wow, Anderson with the goal. I'm not sure what I'm more surprised about. Fulham in front, highlight for Newcastle. Directly afterwards, Isaac Hayden tackled and Kearney wins it back. Come on. Come on, Fulham. Don't concede straight away. Jamal Lewis down the left, whipping it back to Isaac Hayden. And oh, Caviero could have intercepted. Javier Manquillo oh, off the post and wide. It's all good. Still in front. I don't want Anthony Robinson to stick too tight. So Maximin, he's got the pace to burn him. Still up by a goal. Halfway through the first half, another corner for Fulham, and it's headed away by Kieran Clark. Go on, Kenny, win that, son, win that, there we go. Straight into the feet of Lamina, and that's a shocking pass, and Hayden loses out, and that's our ball. No, it's not. Callum Wilson takes over the halfway line. Oh, and he's just split the defence, but Areola bails me out. I'll tell you what, we look dangerous from corners, don't we? Caballero, oh, got to bury that, son. Lamina. Well over the bar, free volley from about six yards out. That should have been 2-0 Fulham. Tell you what, we've we've been doing really well. We've had more of the ball, we've had a higher pass completion ratio, we've had a couple of golden chance, and at a break we lead by a goal to nil. This is not what I was expecting, but you best believe I'm gleaming right now. So the best thing to do is not what say what the assistant says, and that's say I'm happy with performance so far, because that just won't work. But now I don't know what to say. Hands together. Don't get complacent out there. They're motivated. The boys are motivated. I tell you what, 45 minutes away from a massive win on match day one. This will be huge. 
Well, we've just entered the final quarter of an hour and there's been nothing going on in the second half at all. Going to burn a bit of clock here. And oh, what I was about to, but there is a highlight. And I think it's going to come to the hosts as well as Carl Darlow launches the goal kick long. Joel Linton flicks on. I think Wilson's offside. He's beaten Areola, but not found the back of the net. And he was indeed offside. Wouldn't have counted. Five minutes to hold on. Bobby Reed on. And I'm going to have him as a pressing forward just to put the pressure on the back line. Uh, but I think I might just leave it at that, to be honest. I think I might just leave it at that. I'm, I'm okay with this current Fulham team here. I think we're, we're kind of, kind of in control. Or so it seems that way. Just about to enter stoppage time. Three minutes allocated. Anguisa. Oh, come on, Bobby. Off the bench. You've taken that. Really? Oh, God, no, it's not. Get in! Fulham win on match day one! Get in! Great interception by Anguissa and Reed off the bench. I thought he took it way too far wide. Catches Carl Darlow out of the near post. Shouldn't be getting beaten from that angle, really. But probably taken by the element of surprise. And I certainly have been. Newcastle nil, Fulham 2. What a way to start the season off. Absolutely gleaming outstretched arms. I'm proud of your performance out there. Nobody gives a chance today. Well done. Everyone's inspired and motivated. You love to see the body language. Fulham have won the first game of the season. That's fantastic. All right, so that will end the first episode of the Football Manager 2021 save, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. I certainly have. Fulham off to a winning start on match day one. Buzzing with that, but as we know, it's a long old season. And we're still going to be one of the teams that will probably struggle come the end of the campaign. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself, despite the fact I'm buzzing with that win. So thank you very much for the season opener, guys, and the series opener too. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the very next episode very soon, where we will play through quite a bit of the start of the season and come back with, I tell you what, that's a very big double header there as we look to close out November. We'll play through October, we'll play through September and we'll come back in late November with the baggies at home. Could be a very early big battle and then leads away at Ellen Road as well. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode of my Football Manager 2021 save very soon.